Welcome to Mission Majima. Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about Majima Nikaya 5, the Anangana Sutta. So uh, this sutta, the Anangana Sutta, translated as unblemished, is really, as I see it, all about beauty, internal beauty, spiritual beauty, and external beauty, and what it means to have that beauty, especially that internal beauty, blemished. And the Buddha, I'm sorry, Sariputta, who's the one giving it, um, talks about these blemishes as the sphere of unwholesome wishes, which are basically the anger and irritation that arise from thwarted, petty wishes and desires. And as I mentioned, Sariputta, uh, foremost in wisdom, gives this to a group of monks, and Mahamogalana is in the audience and becomes his interlocutor. Sariputta begins by giving two similes, uh, and then Sariput uh, Mahamogalana gives two follow-up similes describing Sariputta's skill in teaching. The first simile that Sariputta gives is comparing four different types of people, and he compares each of those four to a bronze bowl and how that bowl is either neglected or looked after. You can imagine a four by four grid. And in the first row, you've got people who have an internal blemish. Some of this uh, you know, sphere of unwholesome wishes and anger and irritation when they're pointed out. The second row is people who don't have blemishes. First column is people who don't know that they've got the blemish or don't have the blemish. And the second column is people who do know that they do have the blemish or don't have the blemish. The second simile that Sariputta gives is comparing two different bronze dishes, both beautiful and are both carried about a town. In the first instance, inside of the beautiful bronze dish being paraded about is the carcass of a uh, snake, of a dog, of a person. And that's similar to someone who has external beauty. Specifically, it's in a monastic context where what's praiseworthy are these ascetic practices. So it's beautiful in that way on the externals, even if they're wearing rags, etc. But it also applies to physical beauty for a lay person or someone um, who's got this external beauty, but is, you know, ugly internally. And the second instance is someone who's beautiful externally, whatever that is, lay or monastic, but has this great rice and delicious food inside. Uh, Mahamogalana gives two similes. The first simile is like a cartwright, this person who is making a wheel and uh, rounding out the edge of this wheel. And that's so too. Um, Sariputta is someone who's basically finishing this wheel and um, sanding out all of the fine, you know, rather um, subtle defilements, these blemishes, refined blemishes. And the second simile is one of a young person, man or woman, who basically adorns themselves and puts on a, a garland. And so too, if we practice in this way of getting rid of this sphere of uh, anger and irritation at uh, thwarted desires, then we're adorning ourselves. So Ajahn, what do you find most interesting about this sutta? I think some discourses have power not in some hidden meaning that has to be drawn out, but just in their specificity of the things that they talk about um, us refining. And in the instance of the Anangana Sutta, the Buddha's, um, or Venerable Sariputta's, just the list he gives us of the blemishes that one can have, they're so on the mark. Um, just to read out some of the specifics that I remember reading this the first time and just being like, wow, he, he really nailed it. Because um, <laughs> in my, you know, I've had moments. Um, if I commit an offense, I hope the mendicants don't find out. If I commit an offense, I hope the mendicants accuse me in private, not in the middle of the Sangha. May I be accused by an equal, not as by a uh, non-equal. I hope the teacher will, question the men will teach the mendicants by repeatedly questioning me alone, not some other mendicant. Oh, I hope the mendicants will enter the village for the meal, putting me at the very front, not some other, and so on. So basically, these 19 different unwholesome blemishes uh, can be divided into through uh, those about committing offenses, um, desire to be treated as the foremost, desire of, for honor through teaching, desire for honor in general, and desire for fine material support. And speaking back to the simile you mentioned of the Cartwright, um, I think it's really apt here, and as with so many similes in the 
Nikai, as you think you understand, and then you look deeper and there's more going on. And in this case, the, uh, on, the onlooker who's watching the Cartwright straighten the wheel says that just as they're straightening the rim and any warps out of the rim, um, such that eventually the core becomes sound. Um, even so, I see in this suit of Venerable Sariputta straightening out the rim, all the details of our actions in order to get to the core of humility. And you can't just tell someone to be humble, but what you can do is straighten out the rim of the wheel, all the detailed, specific actions, and hope that through that, the core becomes sound. So as this combination of detail and then uh, summarization through a perfect image, I just find very elegant in this sutta. So Ajahn, what new uh, elements do we have in the Anangana Sutta? So it's the first discourse in the Majjhima Nikaya uh, that we've come to so far of someone other than the Buddha giving the discourse. It's Sariputta. And there's about 10 to 20 discourses in the Majjhima that are like that. And you find yeah, somewhere between 5 and 10% of all suttas given by someone other than the Buddha. Um, it's also it's our first meeting with Mahamogalana, foremost in psychic powers. And it's the first instance where we find what's elsewhere called the Upanaka Dhammas, three incontrovertible teachings of sense restraint and moderation in eating and devotion to wakefulness. So an interesting, very useful list. Just to go back to um, that first simile, another thing which is interesting about that two by two grid is that the second column, people who know whether they've got uh, blemishes or not, they're superior in a certain way of speaking to someone who doesn't know mm. because they can take action, whether that involves uh, if they do have blemishes, you know, do what it takes to get rid of that, or if they don't have blemishes, prevent blemishes from, from coming up. So that's really interesting. Mm. That's great. Uh, Ajahn, what do you find is useful or usable in this in this discourse? Pretty much, I mean, it's one of the most practical discourses you, I mean, so many are practical, but this is so specific. Um, some of those phrases just echo through my holy life. It's, you come across some teachings that do that. There's another in uh, the Kasapa Samyutta where Venerable Maha Kasapa says, if um, as a mendicant, uh, one should approach families for alms, basically, uh, thinking, when among others, how could I possibly think, may they give much, not little? How could I possibly think, may they give fine things, not coarse things? How could I possibly think, may they give respectfully, not disrespectfully? And that's a sim similarly to this sutta, another phrase that just echoes through my, my holy life over the years. Um, and the thing you pointed out around one knowing that they have a blemish being... Um, praiseworthy. It's comforting because I've got blemishes and the Buddha just saying knowing is, is worth is worth something um, is very meaningful. And then finally, the uh, acknowledgement that external ascetic practice and the beauty that that uh, kind of uh, implies in, in the spiritual sense does not necessarily uh, imply what's inside the bowl. And I love the intense imagery the Buddha uses of the, the corpse of the snake, the child, or the dog. I mean, that'll get your attention. It's gross. It's gross. <laughs> so, Ajahn, um, what's the word of the week? So the word of the week is yatabhutam, which means, is it indeclinable? Meaning, as it is. You find it a bunch, I think over 1,500 times in the Nikayas, the whole canon. And yeah, yata, as butang, as things are, as they've come to be. Um, it's a phase of understanding that's on its way to liberation. So, Well, thank you, Ajahn. And uh, for those joining us on Sunday, uh, you can see us on Zoom in a few minutes. And otherwise, we'll see you for Majjhima Nikaya 6 next week.